Passion appears to be more a quantity of something rather than the quality of something. It seems to be about an intensity or amount of feeling rather than being itself a particular feeling. If you are passionate about something, it is not that you feel a particular thing about something. It is that you feel that that, that thing with a certain intensity, almost as though there is a kind of commitment to a feeling. It is a question of letting go of yourself as someone who can feel something and of letting go of the feeling itself, not trying to control it. So there will be an element in the passionate of something even dangerous or irrational. It is hard to imagine someone being passionately rational. It is hard to imagine someone feeling passionately safe. This may account for passion's frequent absence. Passion is something that you find very rarely in contemporary performance. Contemporary performance seems to depend more on the reference to certain ideas rather than on an expression of what it is that happens when you try to make something. The latter being an approach that seems to have slipped out of fashion. Perhaps passion is a good word for something that is an excess, something that is not strictly necessary. And it is in the excess that you might find the reason for doing something. You might even find the justification for doing something. Nobody needs to fall in love, but without having done so, you might feel you've never lived. Perhaps this is the connection of passion to art. Perhaps art is the expression of something unnecessary although paradoxically essential. It goes beyond the things that we need. We may encounter cultural practitioners who know everything about the craft and what they do. For instance, about how to make the body do certain things. But they don't approach the answer to the question of why they are doing it. By devoting yourself to this thing which is unnecessary, let's call it passion, to this thing that is beyond what is strictly required, you can get closer to transforming the world in which the normal and required things are done into a world where those things might not even exist, or at least where they become very much less important. In this way, passion and art, like love, is a hugely liberating force, liberating us from the ordinary. It is a very important part of passion that it goes beyond the necessary. And as humans, we all secretly know that living beyond what is necessary is precisely what it is that makes us human. That is why empty technical perfection on stage is so distressing, because it is not really human. And why would humans not really want to be human? In this way, passion is an acceptance of the human, whereas lack of passion is a denial of the human. This is why the lack of impassion inspires such a sense of urgency. It is why this lack is so disturbing. For many, a life without passion is unlivable, even if it may run more easily. And clearly, anyone can be passionate about anything. There is, I think, a political aspect to this question too. It is in the interest of culture to suppress passion because passion leads people to a certain kind of freedom from the everyday. And that makes people independent. Independent because people who live freely live their lives not for the ordinary, but for their passions. And their passions are impossible to control. One of the things that makes passion passion is that it is impossible to control. And the culture, as a representative of government, is very interested in resisting, if not outlawing, this independence. In this way, a state-run venue will encourage its audience to reduce what it has seen to a set of highly controlled verbal concepts, which are immediately expressible and immediately comprehensible. What those running the venue don't want to acknowledge is that people might be full of a range of emotions and thoughts they neither understand nor are able to control. It is exactly that freedom, that challenge, which scares people. 
and this fear can lead people to accept the control offered by the culture because it appears that the culture is offering relief. The culture exploits this fear by pretending to consult the audience and pretending they are interested in what the audience is saying. This consensus of lies and deception is arrived at in order to keep everyone safe. So in that sense, the absence of passion on stage is far from being a passive gesture. On the contrary, it is an aggressive attempt to help the culture keep people feeling safe. And people will allow anyone to do anything to them as long as it is in the name of safety. But any artist knows that that safety is an illusion. The area where there is no safety is the area where you can operate and where you can feel free. A pretty good name for that area might be passion, a word very often associated with love and with art. And anyone who has experienced either knows that neither is safe. That is not their purpose, but without them, what's the point of being alive? Again, a question that doesn't make you feel terribly safe. It is possible to feel some sympathy with the culture. After all, its job is partly to try to make everyone feel safe. But as an artist, that means that culture, even though it seems as though it should be a natural ally, is in fact an enemy. One more important aspect of passion, as our word for the degree of a feeling, for the commitment to a feeling, is that it can't be bought. It's impossible to package it. And yet it takes a long time to generate passion. And it needs context, it needs locations, it needs opportunities. All of which cost money. And the problem, the irony is, to get that money, you need to speak to people in whose interest it is for you not to have any passion for what you do, or at least not to have that out of control aspect that is the most important constituent of passion. What can we do about this problem? Maybe the antagonism inherent to the situation is part of passion itself. Passion can show you a world that either doesn't exist or is very hard to make exist. And yet this passion world is stronger than this safer real world without passion that you know. There is inevitably a struggle in this, a fight even. And that's another thing many people want to live without. Struggles are difficult, fights are unpredictable and dangerous. But again, without those things, without the struggle, what's the point? Although it's not useful to bite the hand that feeds you, it is also not a good idea to listen too closely to the conditions given to you by the hand feeding you. The important thing is that you need feeding. The important thing is not what the person feeding you thinks they can get in return. The same goes for love, the same goes for passion. Democracy today seeks to get the majority to agree to and obey its dictates. Thus it can claim to have a consensus without ever having actually consulted anyone. Culture today asks artists to give up their passion in return for the promise of earning money. Both of these demands are very dangerous contemporary diseases, but they are temporary diseases. They can be cured. Democracy and culture have other obvious benefits, and they haven't always had this sinister approach to consensus or towards artistic passion. But ultimately, passion needs the struggle, because passion attempts to wake you with your own commitment to a feeling or to an activity, or to a person, or to a place, or to whatever it is you are passionate about.